I have been asked repeatedly, so what happened to that mixed up garden you made? Where you just threw all those seeds out there? Well, there wasn't really a lot to show through the winter, but it's warming up a little bit. And this is what we have. A large percentage of that is nitrogen fixers. You could see the peas in here. The ones with the smaller fern-like leaves are lentils. This area right here is the worst of the soil. Did not do particularly well, which is funny. I mean, you could see the delineation, the difference when you go over here. I'm not sure exactly what we did there, but whatever. Maybe we didn't throw enough seeds. But look at, I mean, it's there to there is a big difference. So we could pick peas out of here. There are a lot of little brassicas that are in the mix. You could see little brassicas scattered all the way through. Even if we just called this, you know, a cover crop area and we chopped it all down and used it for mulch or we turned it under and we just used it to feed the soil, that would be worthwhile. But I think there are plenty of peas we could pick out of here. And probably as it warms up, some of these brassicas that are down inside are going to start popping and growing out through the peas. The, the legumes and the brassicas seem to work pretty well together. One of the reasons I like doing this sort of thing is it's sort of like a ropes course, you know, where you have to have trust and faith and, and, and you don't want to drop Shelly on her head. One of the things about those courses is they're, the idea is to teach you to think differently and to kind of lose your fear. So taking all of your seeds and mixing them up and spreading them all over a big area instead of very carefully trying to give them perfect conditions and really carefully trying to space and get the right, uh, the right thing in at exactly the right time, etc. You're chucking it out there and just seeing what happens. And I think a lot of people are paralyzed by fear. The fear of, I'm not going to do this plant right. This is not going to be, this is not going to be what I want. And, or maybe, maybe I'll do it and it'll die. Or if I prune that tree, it's probably going to get an infection and die. Or if I, if I, if I don't do this or that or the other thing. Look, there's a lot of food that's going to come out of this plot for just throwing it around and raking or tilling it in. I've done this multiple times. Every once in a while I come through and I remind myself with a, with a bed like this, I've got all these extra seeds. I'll just throw them out there and see what happens. It's not that big a deal. Is this one blooming? Yep. So this will turn into a pea pod later. And then, and then we'll pick the pea pods off and we'll shell them and there'll be green peas inside because we threw all these pea seeds all over the place. So these are all peas, but this one's just starting to go right here. Yeah. And then they'll all grow later. I plan food forests the same way. I throw a whole bunch of seedling trees and potted trees and plants and seeds at the ground. What is nature going to select out of here? What are we going to get? Every once in a while, it's kind of fun to just stop planning, start to throw seeds around like nature throws seeds around. How many tree seeds do you think went into making that oak right there? Is that great big oak? Can you imagine how many acorns an oak like that could drop in a year? How many of those acorns do you think actually become new oaks? It's not very many. We have a much better success rate just tilling the ground and throwing all this stuff in here than nature has planting oaks. This right here is super simple and it kind of gets you thinking in a different way. It's not about failure. Like, let's just throw it out there and see what happens. This actually works really, really well for salad gardens. Now, is this the way you want to grow all your food? Well, maybe. I mean, it's better than not growing any food. But you will get better results putting things in rows and spacing and thinning and, you know, carefully selecting varieties and types and taking really good care with the soil, etc. 
but for a way of losing your obsessive compulsive nature, this is a really good way to do it. So when I wrote the book, Compost Everything, it was kind of from the same idea, not necessarily planting seeds everywhere, but, but looking at complicated systems and saying, what's the very basic level of this, right? So with composting, the very basic level is you throw it on the ground and it rots. So with gardening, you put seeds in the soil and they grow with the water and the sun. And all of the other stuff, you know, uh, the crack key method and balancing micronutrients and getting your spacing precise and creating polycultures and plant guilds. These are all useful and fun things, but every once in a while it's nice to just kind of go out and play. It's like you, you've got all the paints and stuff in the canvas and you look at this canvas and say, man, I'd really, really, really like to paint something really complicated but I don't really have the time right now or the inclination or I feel like I have a creative block. So instead, you just start putting paint on the canvas and say, you know, that kind of feels like it could be turning into a sky or something. I don't know, maybe this won't be the greatest painting I ever did, but it can sometimes get you through the creative block. And you might find a color that you really like or you might find something, a brush stroke that you might use when you do your next serious piece. So by just kind of throwing stuff out here, we see which, which crops are actually going to handle it, what's going to do well. It keeps the life going in the soil, the root exudates and the nitrogen fixing, it, it makes it grow. And it's kind of fun to just look at a great big carpet of green. A friend of mine named uh, Sean took his front yard in suburban Orlando area and he just, turned the ground over and he threw seeds all over the whole thing. Pumpkin seeds and herb seeds and flower seeds. Just covered the whole area. And then the weeds started to grow up and his neighbors started to complain and code enforcement got called and all that craziness. But he sent me this picture of his driveway and his driveway is totally covered with all of these pumpkins that he's, he's just pulling pumpkins out of the weeds of his front yard. And sometimes when you try to make the absolute perfect system, it doesn't work and then you get really upset because you put a huge amount of time and effort into it. So it's okay to go and play in the garden and it's okay if all your seeds don't come up and it's okay if things are a mess. You're going to discover things and it may break through some creative blocks. So this mixed up garden method, is this gonna be my next book? No, this is just for fun. And it's gonna be interesting to see how it progresses as the peas are just going into bloom and it's getting a little warmer and the brassicas are just starting to emerge from between the lentils. At the very least, we covered the area with life for this time period and I wanted to show you how it was going. Thanks for watching. Be sure to check out the link to my books below and do the like thing and the subscribe thing and the bell thing and all that stuff. And until next time, may your thumbs always be green.